Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to answer another question from the forum. This one from Nikita Fix 14 and it is apparently Nikita Fix 14's first time posting to the Bubble forum. So welcome to Bubble, Nikita. And what I really love about this, this question and this issue that Nikita is having is that it's something that I see quite frequently from uh, people who are just starting out on Bubble um, in some of the coaching sessions that I do often there will be a very specific problem that's manifesting at some place in the app. But what we'll see when we dive into this particular problem here is that there are some mistakes being made on a fundamental level. So um, in terms of data structure, in terms of taking data and passing it around to different places in the app, there's some mistakes being made at that fundamental level that are really the root cause of some of these other issues that are popping up. So let's dive into Nikita's app here. And what we'll do is we'll just start on the index page here. And what we can see is a list of different food categories here that I can choose from. So if I click on pasta, we can see a number of different pastas being offered. And if I click add for Assassin's Spaghetti Pasta. I go to this page where I can order this now. One thing that jumped out at me first as I was going through more just on a kind of UI UX level is that it seems just the way this interface is set up that I'm unable to add multiple items to my cart, which jumped out at me as something that, you know, typically you can add multiple items to your cart as a customer going through one of these apps. But let's click on order now. And I go to this checkout page after that where Nothing is, is showing up here. So going through this, you know, there, again, there's a whole bunch of different things that could be going on here. But as I dove a little bit deeper, the first thing that jumped out at me is on this index page here. When I clicked on pasta, I noticed that in the path here, we have pasta. And when I took a look at the different pages, we can see inside of the editor here, that what Nikita has done is, is created a different page for each type of food category here, right? So we see burger, biryani, drinks, pizza, et cetera, right? And if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, there should be some alarm bells going off uh, in your head whenever you get into a situation like this where you're creating different pages for each category. You often see this too um, when you, I see this at least when people are setting up their database, sometimes they'll have fields. I can't think of a specific example right now, but you'll see this with like, I don't know, answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four, answer five, as different fields on a data type. And whenever you kind of get into a situation like that, where you're creating a field or a page for each possible option, there should be some alarm bells going off. Um, and you should start questioning yourself and asking yourself, maybe, is there a better way to set this up? Because there usually is. Um, if we go into Sketchpad here, what we typically want to do is we want to have like a category page, right? So one page. And instead of creating a different page for each category, we want to pass data to this category page. So inside of our database, you know, we'll have all of our different food categories, chicken, pizza, pasta. And when the user clicks on chicken, we'll pass that data for that category over to the page or same with pizza, right? And there are a number of ways to, to set this up. You could pass data to a page via URL parameters. You could set a type of content on a specific page and pass data to the page when we navigate to it inside of our bubble app. But we won't get into those different methods right now. The important part is that we want to just take data and pass it around rather than create different pages for different categories in this case. The second thing that jumped out at me as I was going through this app was really, I think, just a data structure problem. So if we look at, we're on this pasta page right now and that we have a repeating group right here. And inside of this repeating group, the type of content is set to food items and the data source is search for food items where the category contains pasta. And if we take a look at what food items are inside of the database here, 
there seems to be, as, as I was looking through these fields, there seems to be a confusion between what a food item is, this concept of a food item, and then the concept of a cart item too. And if we kind of zoom out from bubble for a second and just think about these two things conceptually, what is a food item? A food item in this case, what we're, what we're calling a food item, is going to be something that a restaurant will offer. So let's say that I have a burger restaurant. I'll have different burgers. Each burger on my menu would be a food item. And a food item is going to consist of things in terms of the fields that a food item will have. It'll have a name. It'll probably have a description. It'll have ingredients, which maybe depending on what kind of app I'm building, it might be its own data type too. Um, it is going to have a price associated with it. So these are like a food item will rarely change, right? It's just something that a restaurant offers. Whereas a cart item is more specific to the actual user who's on your app. If I'm going through and I'm selecting a food item that I want to order, well, I'm going to take that food item and then there's also going to be a quantity in terms of how much I want of that particular food item with my order, right? And so if we look at the different fields here, it looks like what Nikita was doing is kind of combining those two concepts into one data type called food items. We can see that the food item has a name, it has a price, it also has a quantity, right? So that's, I think, where some of the messiness is, is happening. We want to have different data types. And you want to... Um, you want to have a data type for these different cart items, maybe even one for a cart too. There are a number of ways to set it up, but the important part is to distinguish between those two concepts in the database. So I hope that makes sense. Um, there's a few more things that we could say going through the app, but really, uh, Nikita, I think that fundamentally, that's probably where a lot of the issues are, are stemming from, is the data, the way that you've structured your database. So I think the best thing to do uh, in this case would be to, I mean, there are tons of different resources available, but to be to probably pause for like three or four days and to just um, review some of the fundamental stuff in terms of how to structure a database, in terms of um, how to take data and pass it around to different places inside of your application. And I think once you do that, a lot of these issues that you're having with your app right now you'll understand what they are, first of all. And then once you understand what what's going on, you'll be able to fix them and everything will start to make a lot more sense. So I hope that helps. And I hope that helped for everyone who's watching this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.